how to get sober 101. For the next six weeks, I'm going to post a video here on Facebook and YouTube on precisely how to get sober. We are in a very serious time where more people are using and abusing drugs now more than ever. Not only putting their own lives at risk, but everyone around them. This method worked for me, and it works for thousands of other addicts and alcoholics. And the best part is, it doesn't take joining a cult, no admitting to being powerless to your disease, no spiritual awakenings and divine intervention, no subjecting women to rooms full of pedophiles, rapists, and other sex offenders, thanks to the court order, which I already know what the members will say. Oh, well, we don't like courts forcing people into our rooms either. Well, then I ask you, where is the outrage of the AA community of them forcing kids into the rooms? Where is the outrage of the AA community that they are forcing hardened criminals into their rooms? Nothing. To those of you who ask, why not leave AA alone? Why not just let it keep doing what it's doing? Well, let's take a look at last year and how we surpassed the record of overdose and overdose-related deaths. All while AA, NA, and these 12-step programs were being used by treatment centers, rehabs, and the communities to treat the drug epidemic. Let's take a look at its pathetic success rate of, let's call it, less than 10%, in which some studies showed as low as 3%. Why are so many people failing AA? Take it from me, if you are an addict or an alcoholic who has been going in and out of these rooms, struggling to get sober, and still can't get sober, you did not fail AA. AA failed you. It's because of what they're being taught. Steps and Promises written by Bill Wilson, a man that thought LSD was going to be the cure to addiction. A man that in his own memoir said he was out to make a name for himself. When looking at the harms of AA it is, and its incredibly high relapse rate, three major things stand out. One, teaching these addicts that they are powerless to, to their disease, that they are just victims of their disease, that they have no control or choice when it comes to using again. They're teaching people to not even try to stop and to just give in to temptation because they don't think they're because they think they're powerless and relapse is just part of being powerless. Two, they're teaching addicts that this is a lifelong disease, that they will only put their addiction in remission, and they will have to make meetings for the rest of their life to keep it in remission, teaching them that once an addict, always an addict. And three. They focus way too much on spirituality and morality as a means to get sober. No good has ever come out of telling a kid with a heroin addiction that just the thing that they need to get sober is a spiritual awakening and divine intervention. And I already know what the members will say. Oh, the powerlessness, divine intervention, and spiritual awakening, those are all just metaphors. <laughs> What a great idea to start speaking in metaphors and paradoxes to people who are already confused and not in the right state of mind. This method, no metaphors, no paradoxes, no oxymorons, to the point how to get sober. As I go through this in the next six weeks, it'll be by parts. So each week will be a different part to the entire series. So, I'll see you guys next week.